G'day, I'm James. And let me tell you the story of what I honestly believe made me a mathematician. I grew up in an old Victorian house back in Adelaide, Australia, and every room of the house had a pressed tin ceiling with some sort of floral design on it. The kitchen, the living room, the dining room, pressed tin ceilings everywhere, including my childhood bedroom. And the design on my bedroom ceiling was a particularly simply, simple geometric design. It was basically this, a five by five grid of squares. I mean, the edges were vines, little flowers in the corners, but basically every single night as a young lad falling asleep, I would stare at that. And of course, what does a young child do when they stare at that every single night? Well, they start making games and puzzles for themselves. For example, I count how many squares there are on the grid. Now, clearly five by five makes 25 squares until I realized there's actually more than 25 squares in this picture. If you start counting the two by two squares, you start seeing lots of those around the place. And also count the three by threes and the four by fours and the one great big five by five. So I figured out a way to count all the squares in that grid as a puzzle for myself. And I started counting rectangles and I made up all sorts of games and, and dilemmas and challenges for me to think about as I was falling asleep. But there's one particular challenge that I made up for myself that stuck with me for years and I couldn't solve it for years, and it's that one puzzle I honestly believe made me a mathematician. And it was this one. So here's lots of copies of that five by five grid, and the game I played for myself was this. Start at some corner, say maybe the top left corner. And I asked myself, can I walk a path that visits each and every cell exactly once? You know, here's a little sort of complicated one. I'm gonna take vertical and horizontal steps, and voila, I went through all 25 squares there, visiting each cell exactly once. Great, starting in the top left corner, grand. And I thought, okay, well obviously there's more than one way to do this. If I ask this puzzle first, you might just think to do diagonals or something. There's lots of ways to do it, but the point was it could be done. And I started like another cell, maybe the square cell. This time you might think, okay, could I walk apart this every square? And you might think, this time I could just do a spiral. Grand, do a spiral or something else. That's it, that's my game. Just pick a spot, a starting spot, and walk horizontal and vertical steps and try to visit every cell exactly once. For example, if I start here, one in from the corner, like a little bit from this corner, a little bit, can that be done? And now you're like me, I couldn't actually drop it to my ceiling and draw, I just had to stare at it. So in your mind's eye, can you see a path starting at that dot that visits each cell exactly once? Maybe you want to pause or not, um, but I will give it a try right now as well. But as a kid, I was just doing this in my mind's eye, staring up at the ceiling, and I'm going to do something like this. I have no idea if it's good or bad. I'm just sort of feeling my way, hoping for the best. Is it okay? Voila. Voila. And that's it. That's my game. So I might try, say, the bottom of the, of the middle row. Or I might try just one in from the corner on the, on the bottom row. Or I might try some spot like just, I don't know, just off-center a little bit. All sorts of different places to start. And then I realized something curious was going on. Try that one. I bet you can do it pretty quickly. I've got, I'll give you five seconds. I bet you can probably see a path that actually works for that one. Five seconds. Boy, five seconds feels a long time when you're just standing on a camera by yourself in a little, in a little storage room with black curtains. All right, I bet you could do that one. I bet you found a path that would probably work in your mind's eye that did something like, oh, oh, I think I just did it there with my finger. Grand. But then you try a, cell, a starting cell like this one or this one, and then suddenly I realized the game is different. I tried this one, couldn't do it in five seconds. Try that one, couldn't do it in five minutes. I kept trying that one, I couldn't do it. I tried another one, I couldn't do this one. This was also a tricky cell. In fact, I started finding that some cells were obviously good, fine starting points. You can actually do the, solve the puzzle within five seconds, and other ones were just tricky, and I could solve, couldn't solve them. In fact, I could never solve them. Night after night, try after trying, I could never get a solution to cells like that. So some cells were easy starting points, some cells were tricky, but because I couldn't do them, I started thinking, I wonder if they're actually impossible. Is it actually impossible to walk a path that visits each and every cell exactly once starting on that spot? And after I couldn't do it, after you know thousands of times, hundreds of times, I started thinking this must be an impossible starting cell. That must be an impossible starting cell. And I started finding other cells I thought were impossible. But here's the thing, I must have been a strange child because I tried and I tried and I tried. And I said, okay, I want a logical ironclad reason why those starting cells were starting to think were actually impossible, truly are impossible starting cells. And that's the puzzle that stuck with me for years, literally years. All right, so, so you start playing this game for a while. So let me, let me show you what my brain was doing. 
obviously after a while, um, I said, okay, which cells are doable, which cells are not? So for example, stay in the top left corner, yes, I could start there. That was a yes, I could do it. And if you want to think like a mathematician, mathematicians don't like hard work. You say to yourself, well, what if I started there instead of the other corner? And you say, well, just take this picture, don't do any work, just turn it 90 degrees, and then you have an answer to starting there. So that corner is a yes, that must be a yes cell as well. Then take this answer 90 degrees and turn another 90 degrees, and you have a path that starts there. Whoa, so without doing any work, that must be yes, that's doable, yes, that's doable. So I could see all the corners were doable. I could see the center was doable, that one's doable. Um, I could see that this one was doable, one in from a corner. So that was a yes cell. And then by the same thing, take this picture, turn it 90 degrees, it'll be an answer to starting there. Aha! I was obviously thinking like a young mathematician back in those days. By the way, my definition of a mathematician is someone who works very, very hard to avoid hard work. Exactly the sort of thing. That one, turn this picture 90 degrees, 90 degrees, that must be a yes, another 90 degrees, a yes. So I can start seeing structure to some yes cells. Um, this one turns out to be a yes. I think I did it with my finger, maybe. Did I? I don't know. Can I do it now? Oh, yep, yep, that's a yes. Yes. Same trick, turn it 90 degrees. That's an answer, yeah, yes, yes. So actually, there's more structure than yes cells. Look at that, it's kind of pretty there. And then there are these annoying, tricky cells. Starting there was tricky. Starting there was tricky. And in fact, as I kept playing, and you might argue, these all have to be tricky as well. So all my tricky cells were there, all my yes cells were there. Whoops, and there's another tricky one. Tricky and yes. All right, so the puzzle that stuck with me for years. Come up with a logical, ironclad logical reason why those T's should be not T for tricky, actually I for impossible. And I thought about this night after night after week after week after month after month after year after year. This puzzle stuck in my brain for six years. Six years. Yes. This was at the back of my brain all that time. I wasn't actively thinking about it. My, my subconscious was always mulling on it. And here's the amazing thing. I remember it was, I was year 10, walking to school up to Unley High School, up, up on the streets of Unley High School, and I wasn't even thinking about this problem, and suddenly it hit me. An epiphany just really hit me hard. It was a picture that actually, once for all, if you just thought about that picture for a moment, you realized, oh my goodness, these tricky cells are actually impossible starting points, and I can actually explain why it's impossible to start there and visit each and every cell exactly once. So now, in my little storytelling moment right now, I've got, got some, uh, a, a dilemma. Do you want me to just stop now and let you spend your number of weeks, months, years waiting for your own flash of insight? Or should I give the secret away? So maybe, maybe this, is the, this is the point we should pause the video or just stop the video for all time and have your own, own epiphany. All right, I'm about to give it away. Here's what occurred to me when I was a young lad, year 10, walking up to school one morning, not even thinking about this problem. It was actually this picture. It was right before my eyes all the time, at least my mental eyes. If you look at this, you can't help but notice that the yes squares are yellow cells. I guess, whoops, that's not yellow. That's yellow. If I actually color them in like a checkerboard, they really are following a checkerboard pattern. I've got yellow cells and I've got blue cells in a checkerboard. All the yes squares correspond to the yellow cells. All the blue squares were the tricky cells, which I've now said, Oh my goodness, actually think of this checkerboard, you can now prove those blue cells are actually impossible cells. It was that realization of think of the picture that way that everything fell into place for me that moment as I was walking to school one day. Okay, why, how? <laughs> okay, this doesn't help. So, oops, I've skipped a yellow cell, here's a yellow cell. All right, oh, actually, okay, let's ask some questions about this. Um, there are definitely 25 cells, small cells, and we know that basically half of them are blue and half of them are yellow. Actually, it's not quite half, because you can't do half of 25. In fact, you can see that the yellow cells, there's 13 of them, and the blue cells, there are 12 of them. And that was the thing that made me realize, oh my goodness, starting on a blue cell is impossible because of this mismatch of counts. Think of it this way. I'm about to walk a path. Suppose I'm trying to start a walk path from here. I'm on this, uh, no, which was a bad one. That's a bad one. There's a bad one. Suppose I'm trying to walk a path from here. I'm on a blue cell. If I'm on a blue cell, maybe that one maybe, or in fact any other blue, I've got no choice but to move to a yellow cell next. If I go right or left or up, or if it's up here or down, I have to go to a yellow cell next. So wherever I am on a blue, I have to go to a yellow next. 
And when I'm on a yellow, if I take one more step, I've got no choice, I'm gonna be stepping to a blue next. And when I'm a blue, I'll be stepping to a yellow next. Then a blue, then a yellow, 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 then a blue, then a yellow. One, one blue, one yellow, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine blue, nine yellow, 10 blue, 10 yellow. Uh, 11 blue, 11 yellow, 12 blue, 12 yellow, 12 blues, 12 yellows. I've used up all my blues and I haven't yet used up all my yellows. I need an extra yellow, but I can't go blue, yellow, yellow. I'm, if I start on a blue cell, I'm gonna run out of blue cells before I get a chance to use up all the yellows. In fact, the only possible place that I could have a yellow cell to make this all work is to start with a yellow cell. Then I can have 13 yellows and 12 blues and I can alternate colors as I walk and it would all work out. And in fact, every yellow cell was indeed doable. Whoa, whoa. That moment, that moment when I was 14, 15, whatever it was for year 10, was such a rush for me, it's such an adrenaline rush. I remember being just absolutely gobsmacked by this and just felt so elated. It was really truly, it was a rush. And here's the amazing thing. I did not equate this with mathematics whatsoever. This looks, looks like nothing I was doing in school maths. It was nothing to do with maths. In fact, it's a puzzle I even just made it by myself. I couldn't even tell anyone about this puzzle. In fact, I told no one about what, how excited I was that morning, but this excitement was extreme. And then when I went to university and started studying mathematics, I realized, oh my goodness, I was doing mathematics all along. This is mathematics. In fact, mathematicians even have an argue, a name for this sort of argument. They call it a parity argument. I discovered for myself as a young lad, a parity argument that actually proved that something was impossible. It's impossible to start in a blue cell and visit every cell exactly once. Whoa, so I had been doing maths all along. It looked nothing like what I could do. I could talk to none of my teachers or none of my friends about this. It was a lonely experience for me, but it was a profound one, and it really was a huge mental rush and made me realize in hindsight I had been doing mathematics all along. Absolutely beautiful. So thank you to my bedroom ceiling for making me a mathematician. But of course, here's the thing. Every solved question in mathematics begets more questions. It's an invitation for more. So here's my, my invitations for you to think about. Did I luck out that I had a five by five grid of squares on my bedroom ceiling? What if I happened to have a six by six grid of squares? Do you think I'd be a mathematician for this reason or maybe some other reason? Or what if I did not just an odd by odd or an even by even? What if I mixed up the even odds? Suppose I had a rectangle of squares on my bedroom ceiling, a five by six rectangle. What, what about that? What can you say about path walking in that case? Or suppose I didn't live in this world I live in. I actually had a three-dimensional bedroom. Suppose I had a five, let's see if I can draw it. A five by five by five, three-dimensional grid of, well, I guess not squares, grid of cubes. Whoa. That would be like 125, that's so like 125, it is 125, little cubical spaces. So the puzzle here is, can you start in some office and make a move that either goes left to the next office over there, or right to the office over there, or forward the office in front, or back the office behind you, or up or down. Starting at one office, could you work your way through a three-dimensional path and visit each and, exact, each, and, each and every office exactly once? What is the three-dimensional version of this five by five by five puzzle? Wow. Okay, so there's my story. What made me a mathematician? It was rough as beans, just me just tatting right now. But here it is. I hope this is enjoyable and interesting and at least intriguing to you. All right, thanks so much.